Ephesians 6, demons, devils, and evil spirits. Demons, devils, and evil spirits. They affect all of us every day. Amen. The problem is, most people will not acknowledge them. They won't acknowledge that they have a problem with demons, devils, and evil spirits. Anything opposed to the will of God and the word of God has to do with demonology. Amen. It has to do with demons, devils, and evil spirits. When there's anything in your life or in my life, and it happens in all of our lives, that are, that are contrary to the word of God and the truth of the Bible... It's because of demons, devils, and evil spirits. Now, by the way, I know we have the flesh, and we say, well, I'm just a human. Yeah, we are human, and, and, we're, and we're prone to sin. We're born in sin. But demons, uh, devils, and evil spirits are prevalent and, and have been since the Garden of Eden since man first um, was upon this earth. Now, let's look, and I want to communicate with you on this because you probably got questions on it. You probably don't think demons affect you, but they do. Amen. And uh, let me say this. Once you will admit and acknowledge that demons are messing with you, you got 80% of it made already. Amen. You're way down the road. Amen. Folks are in denial. Yeah. They won't deny the effect of the devil and evil spirits upon their life. I'm not going to see down this. I'm not some uh, weirdo. I'm just telling you uh, we can go what the Bible says. The Bible tells us in uh, uh, the word devils. It's 80 times in the Bible. I looked at them all. I, you, can, uh, uh, you can find that. I think that's just in the New Testament. Uh, but, but you can look at every instance. And, and where it says devils in the Bible, it doesn't always mean the devil. Could be because there is a devil, big boss devil, Lucifer that was cast out of heaven. But there were a third of the angels of heaven that followed him and are the demons that are wandering up and down. Someone, a couple of men said they're, uh, they're moving in uh, on A1A pretty soon. There's a lot of demons and devils, evil spirits on A1A. There's a lot of them on Ridgewood. There's a lot of them on the street where you live. Yeah, the demons dirt they're yeah. everywhere. Now let's pay attention, open your mind, because you see a lot of you, a lot of people that are sitting right here in the sound of my voice today, you've been affected by demons and devils and evil spirits for years, and you haven't even known it, and it's defeated you. Amen. There's thousands of demons and devils and evil spirits. They're not just one. They come in all forms. They can affect just you. You see, the demon and the devil that gets me might not get you. Amen. Might get both of us. There's some that are common. One of them, uh, one of the big demons that gets most everybody is pride. Amen. That's a pride. that's a Amen. demon. Pride. And 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 uh, uh, do you know uh, uh, do you know what demon hold hands with pride, rebellion, rebellion, you see. Because rebellion is a uh, is that's the first child that pride has rebellion, because when you're pride when you're prideful, you rebel. 
because you because you won't admit what your problem is, you, and and you won't humble yourself. Amen. Pride. Well, let's look, let's look here. You got it. You got Ephesians, and let's talk church. We'll talk to one another at Sunday school. Six ten. Finally, my brethren. So Paul here. This is a letter to the church at Ephesus. And uh, it's a church to brothers and sisters in Christ. You see, the epistles in the Bible, they're letters to churches of saved people. The Ephesian church was a, was a saved, was a group of saved. A, a real church, a Bible church, is a group of baptized believers that, 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 that have a common faith in the Lord. And uh, they they work together and they're part of that local church there is no church but a local church Amen. there's no invisible church because the church can't be invisible the word church or ecclesia in the Greek is uh, it's an assembly so you got to assemble to be in a church you got to be somewhere find out some people say well I I come from this kind of church. Someone was in here, I think it was last week. And he said, well, I go to a different church, and uh, they don't preach the way you do. And, 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 uh, and, and I don't like the way you preach, and uh, I like the way the other church preaches. I just said, why are you here? <laughs> Amen. Satan, are you? Amen. Came in, you go out. And she went out the door. That's okay. I don't want to fuss with it. I don't. I don't need her in here making comments. I think it was last Sunday morning at Sunday school. Yeah, yeah. I don't need her yeah. making a comment that she don't like our church and don't like me preaching because I'm the pastor of the church. Uh, where'd the preacher go? Did he split? I don't know. He talked about he wanted to preach and he ain't even here now, so I don't know how he's gonna preach. <laughs> he doesn't hit the road. <laughs> Everybody tell you a lot of different things, then all of a sudden it's gone like the wind, you know. Uh, I don't know who he is. I think did he tell someone he's gonna to preach today? Is he gonna preach here? I don't know nothing about you. <laughs> I'm an ordained preacher. I don't know who he is. He might be ordained from a devil's church. I don't know. I'll tell you one thing. Anybody stand in this pulpit and preach, I'm going to have, I know them, that I've gone over them with a fine tooth comb. Amen. And, 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 and they believe what we have in our bylaws and constitution and what this preacher preaches. He says, well, you ought to let someone else with a different idea. No, if it's, uh, it's we've got a, Constitution and bylaws in our church, and we believe certain things. And the only ones going to preach out of this pulpit believe those things. You need to get a different opinion. No. All I want is God's opinion, and I want it. For, you see, you think you're, I don't think I'm perfect, but I try to get as close to it as I can. Amen. Where them girls are going? Demon just dragged them out the door. Yeah. My wife and Doris. Amen. Good ladies. Doris all right? Huh? She was holding her arm. I don't know if Doris all right or not. What? I said your wife was holding Doris by the arm. I don't know. Yeah, they hold each other's arm and went out the door. Yeah. I think you did all the time. Demon took them out. <laughs> Demon take people out of church. That so-called preacher, I don't know if he's a preacher or not. He's gone. Demon took them out. <laughs> Phone ringing, ring, ring, ring. He's off. He's all with the wind. You see, demons lead people around by the nose, and you don't even know it. Anytime something takes you away from the Word of God, it's a demon. It's it has it's demon activity. I'd say ninety nine point nine. You said, well, uh. uh is it always? Not 100% sure, but 99.9% .9 of the time it, it's sure. Isn't there some legitimate reason why you shouldn't be in church? 
they're few and far between. But most eliminations from a gospel preaching, God fearing church is uh, you've been attacked by demons. That's why there's all kinds of people don't go to church today. They don't think they need church. I talk to people all the time. They're a good Christian. They don't go to church. You ain't a good Christian. You don't have a Bible believing fundamental church that you go to that believes the Bible. If you don't belong to an assembly of believers, you're not a good Christian. You say, well, I just go from place to place and stop where I feel fit. You following demons. You say, I don't. I'm just telling you. Finally, brethren, he's writing to the church. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, we need strength. You're not strong enough. You're not strong enough uh, to take on the devil. So it says, uh, the power of his might. We got to be in God's power. Girls, girls, Miss Doris, Miss Barbara, come on in, sit down. We're having Sunday school. Come on in and sit down. We're having Sunday school. We had a what? Well, you already did that, didn't you? Now see, now that, that's spirit of rebellion. No, it's not funny. No, 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 it ain't nothing funny about it. You can laugh, laugh all you want. It's the spirit of rebellion. No, I'm just, I'm, I'm, you see, see, the trouble is, uh, you laugh at the devil and he drags you around by the nose. That's your problem. You think I was, this is very serious, and, and anything I've said so far this morning, it ain't a joke. I'm very serious about demons. I'm very serious about these big sins of pride and rebellion. And uh, I just, I could identify several other aspects of it that I saw even today. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You see, the devil's got wiles. And they all have to do with demons, devils, and evil spirits. Yeah. The demon's been full. That demon of alcohol, I'm, I could call your names out. I could, I could name some. Some of you shaking your head, yes. The demon, the demon of alcohol uh, uh, has, has influenced you and ruins your life for many years and years and years. People that are sitting right here in this auditorium right now the demon of alcohol has controlled your life for years Amen. some of you might be saved some of you might be lost it could be either way did you know the demon of alcohol uh, uh, can even control a saved person it could but the subject, and I want, to, I want to communicate with you, and I want to talk with you, because nobody talks about it today, but this world is full of demons and devils and evil spirits that attack you and I every time, every day, and many times has the victory over it. Amen. So here in Ephesians 6, it's telling us how to beat it. Put on the whole armor of God that ye be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're not wrestling against anything human. That's, that's Ephesians 6, 12. But against principalities, against powers, listen now, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. That's the demons and devils. They're all around us and they affect every one of us every day of our life. Amen. Every day of our life. And against spiritual wickedness, that's demons, devils, evil spirits, 
in high places. Wherefore, verse 13, follow me now, Ephesians 6, 13, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Uh, when is the evil day? And I would say this, every day. Amen. I'll say the evil day is every day. Amen. I'll say there's not a day goes by that evil spirits it might be some of you. Not, not, not the. Uh, I have not been defeated by the, by the demon of alcohol. I've been defeated by others over the years. Some I've gotten rid of. Maybe some of them I haven't. But I haven't been defeated by the demon of alcohol. My wife's with me. She's been with me all my. Uh, uh, we've been married for longer than we've been saved. We're saved April fourth, nineteen sixty nine. But the demon, of alcohol has not affected me since April 4th, 1969. And, and my wife can, I believe she can testify to that, that that's the truth. But it did affect me before that, before I was saved. In fact, she told me, if you don't, if, uh, if you don't, uh, she see me drunk, she says, uh, if you don't quit drink, I will nothing to do with you. Well, neither one of us were even saved then. Well, she had enough sense to figure that, that there was a demon of alcohol, and she wasn't even saved. I wasn't saved. If we got saved April 4th, I drank since then. But, 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 but I had enough sense, and I loved her enough that I quit drinking. And then she married me. I got drunk a few times after we were married, but not very often, because I, I really paid the price when I did. I mean, she just came down on me. She... <laughs> I went out with the guys and got drunk. We, we lived in a little second floor apartment. Only thing we owned was the clothes on our back and a $50 used TV that we bought. And we just moved from uh, Detroit to Milwaukee. We had a second, second floor apartment furnished. And I went out and got drunk with the boys and I come home you know, in the middle of the night. She, uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't get in the door. Here comes my friend, got somebody with him. Amen. That's good. Praise God. Maybe it wasn't a demon. Maybe the Lord took him out. <laughs> Come on in. Did you go get someone for church? Yes, sir. Good. I was telling, I thought maybe yeah, a demon like dragged you out of church, but, but the Lord took you out and brought someone back. Amen? Yes, sir. Well, good for you. Oh, yeah. Amen. But anyway, I come, I couldn't get in the door. I finally figured out there's something in front of the door. I couldn't move it. I put my shoulder to it, tried to push it. We, we had a kitchen, one bedroom, and a little living room. That was it, a little bitty place. Me, my wife, two kids. Four beds in the bedroom. You couldn't walk in the bedroom. You, you go in there, you crawl over beds. What, a baby bed? Another small bed and a double bed. That's, that's our bedroom. And there was a big, there's a big, uh, my wife calls it a shift robe. That, that's what she calls it. Yeah, that's the old language, like a big old, I don't know what she's calling uh, a, a, a big old double dresser. Yeah. He's called a shift robe. Yeah. How she did it, I have no idea. <laughs> um, um, around them beds, she dragged that thing through the kitchen and propped it up against the door. <laughs> well, let's do that. All right, Barbara. I said, sweetheart, open the door. Don't ever underestimate the You drunk, go sleep somewhere else. I ain't got no place to sleep. Sleep in the car. She worked me over. I finally convinced her. I don't know how a little 110-pound woman going to move that big double dresser what they wanted and pull it and put it in front of the put it in front of man she had like superhuman strength to do that but it was a curse on me but you know what alcohol ain't been a curse the demon of alcohol hasn't got me since I've been saved got a lot of you I could point you out boom 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 I could point you out right now in church you know who you are yes sir can I say something? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's what we're here but for. Before, Talk to you. before I ever, and I drank a little bit in my early life, but before I ever drank a drop, alcohol affected my life. I would, I would walk the streets of Knoxville a lot of times, 
just to keep him going home being around my daddy. Yeah. He'd, he'd be drunk and in a rage. He had a daddy so that I wanted was to drunk. stay away from it. it. But it did affect me. It, alcohol did affect me. I'm oh, so yeah. Against Before alcohol. you're even, when you're so a child. Al I'm so against alcohol. Uh, it's a demon. Oh, yeah. It's a terrible demon. It's a, how, how many of you... Uh, even before, when you were even a child, alcohol affected your life because of parents yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah most all. Yeah. My daddy you know, was yeah. so mean when he was drunk. So, the daddy was a drunk, or your mother was a drunk, or, 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 or that's it. But it's a curse. But alcohol is a demon. Yes, sure is. And I don't think there's only one alcohol demon. I think there's literally thousands and thousands and maybe millions of alcohol demons because. They, they, they all around the world tearing up people's life. How many of you, at one time or another in your life, were, uh, were your life was ruined by the curse of alcohol? Mine was. My wife wasn't. I forced her to drink on her 21st birthday like an idiot. Got her drunk. And she was mad at me. She never, she never drank before that. Never drank since. And Good. me be an idiot thinking someone had to get drunk on her, on her 21st birthday. I mean, that's how people. No. See, that's a demon. As a demon, the full arm, uh, uh, finally, be strong in the Lord, the power of His might put on the whole arm of God, and be able to withstand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. What uh, I determine, evil day is every day. I believe the devil's in attack every, as long as we're on this earth and we breathe a, a, a breath. I, I, don't, I don't believe we attain. Some preachers teach, some preachers, some churches teach sinless perfection while you're still in this flesh. I don't believe the Bible teaches that and I don't teach it. So the devil's attacking us every day. Stand therefore. So it says, having done all to stand. So we have to do... Uh, how, what, what, what do we have to do to stand against the demon of alcohol? We have to do all. We have to do all these things to withstand. What, what, what do we have to do? Uh, let's, let's get the big daddy of all sins and his brother or sister, whatever you want to call it, the demon of pride. I think there's more of those, those demons around than any, any demons. Pride. You know what his brother or sister is, whatever you wanted to call it? Rebellion. Pride and rebellion, they're just hooked up just like that. Why do we rebel against authority? Because of pride. That's all that's the only reason. Do you think of it? Any any time that we rebel, the, talk to me, church. What does it mean to rebel? It yes, Tara. It means to say no. Huh? I'm, nobody's going to tell me what to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. You're going to do it your way. You 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 you, you have and 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 in many and times. For a long time. It now, now, now sometimes nobody has a right to tell you what to do. Amen. Okay, but many times someone does have a right to tell you what to do. Because your pride, you rebel against it, and you won't do what you're supposed to. Mm -hmm. Like rebellion against the Bible, amen, amen. the Bible. <laughs> yes, Terry. Pastor Bob, a, a lot of times people have to tell us what to do, reminding us. Because yeah. as an adult, we already know what to do. We yeah. just refuse to do it. So That's right. That's so pride and rebellion. Comes to you and they say, you how, how many of you? That you th that's true. How, how many of you? Like me, let me be the let me be the first to do it that will admit that the demons, the evil spirits, the devils of pride and rebellion have got us in our life. How many of you how, how many of you have ever done yeah. that? Well if you if you if, uh, if 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 you don't raise your hand, you're lying through your teeth. <laughs> you're the biggest liar that ever uh, walked into this church. Pride and rebellion has got you got you see you can't get rid of demons until you you mark them. Yeah. You got to mark them and claim the blood of Jesus Christ against them. Amen. 
You think you're some goody two shoes that never has pride or never rebels? The devil's got you with pride and rebellion. Well, I ain't going to listen to this. Take a walk out the door, you pride and rebellious person. <laughs> you see, evil spirits, they beat, they beat us to death and they control us. Some of you have been controlled by alcohol spirit for years. Some of you have been controlled by pride and rebellion. I can see, as I look out here, I can see those demons <coughs> shining out of your face. Amen. You say, are you serious? I'm serious as the day is long. I'm serious. Demons, they're real. Yes, they are. They affect us. Yep. They control us. They defeat us. You won't even admit that you lose to demons. And that's just because of just two, probably the biggest two demons, there's millions of them out there, of pride and rebellion. Pride and rebellion. I admit to it. I asked you to, if it ever got you, and... Would you believe it that there were a number of people sitting in our congregation not now that because of their pride and rebellion wouldn't even raise their hand? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Well, how dare you ask me that question? Don't you know who I am? You ain't nobody Amen. without God. Amen. You're a big zero. Amen. <clears throat> you can't beat the devil. He's beating the tar out of you. And you ought to hit the... You ought to hit the uh, yeah, some, some of you... Some of you are way too proud to ever bow your knee to God at an old-fashioned altar and confess your sin and your pride and rebellion. I, I kneel right down there and do it. Would you? I hope so. Huh. Pride and rebellion. I don't have to try to get on many others. I don't even have to get to the alcohol one. I don't even have to get to the sex one. I don't even have to get to... There's thousands of them. Some of them are no, more prevalent than others. But the big demons, there's thousands, yea, millions of them, are demons of pride and rebellion. It's when we become somebody. It's when a pastor becomes somebody. It's when a husband becomes somebody. It's when a wife becomes somebody. It's when a child becomes somebody. It's when we become somebody. When in reality, God wants us to acknowledge that we're a nobody. Amen. Now how are we going to beat it? Let's go on. I, I've memorized it. I can tell you Ephesians 6, 10, 18. I've memorized it. I quote it every day. And some days I get beat by it. Amen. Some days I get beat by an evil spirit. And so do you, but you won't admit it. Because you know why some of you won't admit it? Because, because your sins, your sin might not be alcohol. It might not be sex perversion. It might not be stealing or this or that, but... But but your sin might be a, a, a very uh, your pride and rebellion might be a very very nice one that looks good, huh? You know, there's a lot of pride and rebellion sins that look good. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Take unto you the whole armor of God. So we need what armor do we need? The whole armor of, the whole armor of who? God. God. Do I have any power? To resist devil? Yes, if you take up God's whole arm. Amen. Do I have any power as a person? No. Not a, not a, not a lick of power. No. Yet we try to take on the devil. We won't admit it. We don't we, we, we don't admit first of all 
if you won't admit it's a demon that's getting you, what I say, if you admit it's a demon that's bothering you and, and got this certain thing that's got you, uh, if you admit it's a demon activity bothering you, if you do admit it and you acknowledge it, uh, how much of the uh, how, how, how much of the battle have you won already? Eighty percent. Eighty percent. Eighty percent. That's that's vast majority, don't you think? That's a B if you're taking a test, right? <laughs> so the problem is, folks, talk to me. You know, I want to talk to y'all, and, and uh, no question is a dumb question. This is a time for interactions in Sunday school. Take unto you the whole arm of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So we can stand against these demons. But you got to acknowledge them that they exist. How do you know if something's come from the devil if it opposes the Bible? Amen. How many times people tell me I quote them the Bible, and they say, I don't care what the Bible says. Have you ever said that? I've never said that. I do care what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And I break God's law. But I'll tell you one thing. I won't admit it's because of the adversary that I break it. And I'm going to submit myself to God. Remember James 4, 7, submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. How are you going to resist him? Armor of God? Why are you losing? Why you get mad with folks? Demons. Only reason I get mad with anybody, when I get mad at my wife is because of a demon. When my wife gets mad at me, it's because of a demon. You say, I don't believe that. My wife not even believe it. I don't know if she believes it or not. I didn't ask her if she believed it or not. Yeah, I'm just, I believe it from the Pope when I'm preaching it right now. And the time you have bad feelings towards anybody, bad feelings towards someone, you know what that is? It's hatred! Why don't you mark a demon for what it is? Huh? Mark it. Claim the blood of Christ. Submit yourself to God. The devil will flee from you. Demons. <clears throat> While they permeate our lives, they're all around us every day. They're trying everything they can to stir up the pot. It might be with alcohol. It might be with anger. It might be with sex. It might be with lying. It might be with stealing. It might be with this, that, or the other thing. All right, here they are. Let's go over them. You ought to memorize them. You ought to, you ought to memorize. 10 to 18 is a must. You don't memorize anything. Only, only verse you memorize in the Bible, your favorite, is in the book of John. It's two words, Jesus wept. That's the only one you got. <laughs> you can't even quote John 3.16, the most famous verse in the Bible. Nobody memorized those scriptures today. I'm going to tell you this. You ought to memorize Ephesians 6, 10 to 18. I have. Verse 14, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. Truth, 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 truth. Jesus saith, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. That's the truth. And having on the breastplate, so the first piece of armor is truth. The second is righteousness. Where do you find the truth, first of all? In the Bible. In the Word. In the Word of God. That's where truth is. There's no truth other than the Word of God. You says there's a lot of truth in the world. There's not a bit of truth in the world. That's why you're deceived. That's why you follow worldly people. Uh, that's why you follow worldly professors. That's why you follow, follow people that have made it in the world and made money. I know so many Christians, they follow ungodly worldly people to, to try to be successful in life. Amen. All the only truth you're ever going to find is in the Bible. Amen. You say, this man is a rich man and he knows what to do and I'm going to follow him. You're a fool because he don't have the truth. Money ain't truth. Amen. Worldly power ain't truth. 
just because someone got some power in the world in, in politics or in business or whatever, it don't mean he's got the truth. All the truth you'll find is in the Word of God. And the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness needs to do what? Do right, do right, do right, do right, do right. How many of you know you're supposed to do right, but you do wrong sometimes? I do. Sometimes. All of us do. Breastplate of righteousness. Your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. That's soul winning. Take it, uh, uh, going with the gospel. Amen? Amen. Do you do any soul winning? No. You don't have armor on. If you're not a soul winner, there's a niche in your armor. Yeah. You're not armed like you should. You say, I've never won a soul. That's your problem. That's why, the, that's why these demons and devils are getting you because you don't win no souls. You don't have the all armor on. Your feet shod with preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all. Now what do you think them two words mean, above all? Anybody got an idea, church? Talk to me, church. What does it mean, above all? It means it's the most important thing. It means there's nothing more important than this shield of faith. The shield of faith. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I preach the Bible, you don't care what I say. You read the Bible, you don't care what it says. And when I say the Bible, I mean the authorized version, the King James Bible, not the, not the 200 fake Bibles that they brought out. You say, oh, I read a better Bible than the King James. No, you don't. Uh, if you read another Bible uh, than the authorized version, you read the Devil's Bible. Every other Bible published is the Devil's Bible. You better be careful because tomorrow is the last day of the year, and tomorrow we read Revelation 22, and it says if you mess with the Bible, you add anything to it or, or, or take anything out of it, your lamb will be taken out of the book of life. You won't go to heaven, you go to hell. People that mess with the Bible go to hell. You say, I don't believe I don't care if you believe it or not. It's what the Bible says. Amen. You believe it when you it. when you wake up in hell. Amen. He says, Why do you why do you fight for the there's only one Bible that I'll fight for it? People anybody don't use the authorized version and believe in it, they'll never preach from this pulpit. Never. Never. Someone says, why don't you work with so-and-so and so-and-so? -and -so? I'll say, yeah, you're, the only reason I won't work with them, they don't use King James Bible. Mm -hmm. well, what that got to do with it? What, the King James Bible? <laughs> no, that's what the person going to say. Well, oh, that's got? what they say. Yeah, I've got, I've got people that claim to be, and, and, and uh, they don't know. And I tell them, they say, well, I've studied. I tell them, you ain't studied nothing. You're following ignorant people. Yep. I, I could name you person after person, they say, well, we've looked into us. No, you haven't. You've just followed some idiots that don't believe the Word of God. I've got preachers mad at me. They don't like me. Let me get to these last couple things. Above all, take the shield of faith, where we should be able to quench all the fire and darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation. Get your brain right. Your brain's all screwed up. You watch too much television. You read too many novels. <clears throat> Your mind's all screwed up because you got all kinds of worldliness and the devil infiltrates your mind every day because you're not in the Bible. You don't listen to Bible preaching. You read the wrong kind of devil's Bibles. You watch the stupid television. You watch too many football games. And I did that yesterday. I watched too much football yesterday. I, you, know, you know, I never watched football for three years. I quit completely and I got quit again. I watched it yesterday. God forgive me. The demon of football got me yesterday. Clemson and Alabama won and the demon of football. I should have been reading the Bible or witnessing or doing something worthwhile. Huh? Yeah. Demon of football got me yesterday. He says, you think football's of the devil? Probably, I think so. Because it doesn't honor God. How does football honor God? Anything that don't honor God, you know you and I as Christians ain't supposed to do it. Did you know that? Yeah. 
Even when you eat, it should be to the glory of God. <coughs> Did you know you could eat and sin against God? If you're just eating because, because you like ribs and you're going to overstuff yourself on ribs and all you're thinking about is ribs, it don't honor God. You're supposed to eat? Listen, you're supposed to eat. To, ah, that demon gets me plenty of times. Amen? Get you too? Amen. Yeah. You're supposed to eat to nourish your body. It says, whatever we say or do, it should be all to the glory of God. How, how many of you can say since last Sunday, everything you've done has been to glorify God? I can't. I just admit my sin about the football. Nobody in here can. Anybody with a clear conscience that says you've glorified God in everything you've done. No. Not even for a week. How about a day? Anybody done it for a day? I doubt it. Probably not an hour. <laughs> I mean, we... Our mind goes wrong. Demons. We're in trouble, folks. Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. There you go, Word of God. It all has to do with the Word of God. Sword of the Spirit. King James Bible. Verse 18. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication of all saints. Now listen. Kind of tough Sunday school today. We're done with it. But let me say this. Our chapter for today in the Bible is Revelation 21. It's about heaven. How many of y'all like me to preach about heaven? We like that, don't we? Yeah, so so I'm going I'm to give you a nice sermon about heaven, Revelation 21. And uh, I might poke you a time or two while we're going through it. But it's going to be on Revelation 21 about heaven. It's, it's the chapter for today. I'm finishing reading the Bible through again this year as I do every year. I start it in Genesis and Matthew on the 1st, and I finish it on the 31st of December. I start on the 1st of January. I got Bible reading charts on the, tr on the table. I hope you'll get one if you don't. Anybody else here read through the Bible, all through the Bible this year systematically? Anybody had done it? Well, I've done the whole shot. Do you think you're somebody? I don't think I'm somebody, but I can read for 14 minutes a day and get through the Bible in a year. All you got to do is get your chart, take 14 minutes and read it. Now, sometimes you might read it and not even pay attention. I don't know. We're going to start church at 10. Let's pray. Lord, thank you now. Demons, demons, demons. Evil spirits, devils all around us. Help us to put on the whole armor of God and defeat him. In Jesus' name, amen.